What are the best rotator cuff exercises for CrossFitters and Olympic weightlifters? Number one, elbow elevated dumbbell external rotation. Number two, 90-90 band external rotation. Number three, 90-90 band external rotation to overhead press. Number four, prone Y. Number five, Cuban press. Number six, scaption. Number seven, tempo dumbbell overhead press. Number eight, bottoms up kettlebell pressing. So I'm going to explain exactly why I love these exercises. If you don't care, you just want to see the exercises with some demo videos. I've made an entire article for that and I've left it in the show notes. Go ahead and check that out. Now let's get started on the whys. Why are we talking about the rotator cuff so much? Well, first and foremost, it's very important as a dynamic stabilizer of the shoulder, right? So what does that mean? It's very, very important when we catch a barbell overhead. So the function of the rotator cuff is to hug the ball into the socket, right? So to hug the humeral head into the glenoid. If we don't have good function of the rotator cuff, then the ball moves more in the socket. Every once in a while, while Olympic lifting, someone will dislocate a shoulder, right? Which is obviously not a good thing. It doesn't happen very frequently, but the rotator cuff is responsible for preventing that motion along with the shoulder capsule, right? So the other reason why the rotator cuff is so important is because rotator cuff pathology is commonly reported in the medical literature for Olympic weightlifters, right? And if we want our rotator cuff to get stronger, if we want to get a pain, if we want to get back to training, it makes sense that we want to try to train the rotator cuff in order to do that, right? So why do I believe these are the best rotator cuff exercises? Uh, well, for one, we have to think about the specific demands of Olympic lifts. And again, these are all my thoughts. There's not a ton of literature on the rotator cuff and Olympic weightlifting. There is some for all the references I use that will be in the show notes. You can check that out. You know, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, right? But let's think about the Olympic lift specifically. And first we'll talk about the jerk. So in the jerk, we have a dip followed by an overhead press and then a catch, right? And in the jerk, we're not utilizing our shoulders to drive the motion so much through the pressing portion of the lift. And what I mean by that is that when we dip and drive, most of the momentum to get the barbell moving is coming from the lower body, right? And then when we catch that weight overhead, it's 100% of the load being supported by the shoulders, right? So that catch portion is very, very important. And the other part that's very important, and often the area that athletes will complain that they have pain if they're coming to me, I'm a physical therapist, so they're going to tell me all their pain problems, uh, is a lowering portion, right? So a lot of folks will say when they have shoulder pain uh, and they're Olympic weightlifters or crossfitters that they can do jerks if they can just drop the barbell on the floor afterwards, right? Anytime they have to lower it back into that front rack position, it really, really hurts, right? So here's the thing. The shoulder and specifically the rotator cuff needs to be able to press that weight overhead, needs to be able to catch that heavy load and then control the weight back down into that rack position, right? And the motions the shoulder is doing when you're doing a jerk, right? Or pressing something overhead is going to be resisted flexion and resisted abduction, right? And classically in the medical literature, you'll see that the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus is used quite a bit to do those movements, right? So any sort of scaption exercise has high EMG of the supraspinatus, right? And here's the thing, uh, generally speaking with resisted abduction, the subscapularis is relatively quiet, right? However, we actually do have some research in the overhead press. It's not a jerk, right? So we don't know exactly what's going on in a jerk, but we have a little bit of research. And again, put the link in the show notes, where when we do an overhead press, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the subscapularis are all quite active, right? So really, when we're doing overhead pressing movements like the jerk, we're thinking about all of the parts of the rotator cuff, really, right? And the last point that I think is, a, is really um, important to understand, the principle that's important to understand, is that when we're doing a jerk, we're using heavy, heavy loads, we're moving a barbell very quickly, right? And the heavier a load is, the more you're going to recruit your rotator cuff, right? And from a rehab perspective, if we want the rotator cuff to be able to handle the forces of Olympic weightlifting, we probably need to get a little bit heavier with our rotator cuff exercises and maybe add a little bit of speed. Now, I'm not saying that you should be doing one rep max scaption. I don't think that's the, the case at all. Uh, however, your generic sets of three of 10 to 12 might be a bit light. 
right? Maybe early on in the rehab, you're doing lighter uh, reps, higher reps. But as we progress further along into the rehab program, and also as more of a preventative tool, maybe you want to do sets of six, sets of eight, something that's a little bit heavier, maybe a little faster on the concentric portion, just to mimic the same forces that the shoulder takes during Olympic lifts, right? So how about the snatch? We talked a little about the jerk, right? And during the jerk, the shoulder is working a ton, but it's also working a ton during the snatch, uh, but a little bit different stress, right? So if you think about a snatch, there's two major portions of the snatch where the shoulder is doing a lot. Uh, for one, you have the turnover portion, right? So when you hit triple extension in a snatch, you're fully extended from the ankles, knees, hips, lumbar spine, right? You have a nice big shrug. You have to turn over the bar, drop onto the bar, and then catch, right? And we have some pretty cool research, EMG research, of what's going on in the rotator cuff uh, during this part of the Olympic lift. So during the turnover, as well as during the catch, the supraspinatus and the in infraspinatus are very active, right? So a little caveat here. Um, in this one study, they didn't put any sort of EMG on the subscapularis or the teres minor to see what the heck was going on, right? So we don't actually know if the subscap uh, was contributing a lot. But what I will say is that during the turnover portion of the snatch, when you have your elbows high and outside, you're going from a position of internal rotation and then as you catch, you turn over into external rotation, right? So the posterior cuff or the infraspinatus is going to be responsible for externally rotating the shoulder. It makes sense the infraspinatus is going to be very, very active, right? And during the catch position of the snatch, all of a sudden, you have to have high forces of the infraspinatus, of the supraspinatus to hold that ball into the socket just because that full weight over your head is trying to drive the ball down in the socket. And all those muscles have to fire in order to stabilize the joint, all right? So in conclusion, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscle is very, very important, probably most important in Olympic lifts. Although, don't forget the subscap because we know it's important for a press overhead. But the other part is that the research we have doesn't even address the subscap, whether or not it's active during these exercises, right? Um, so generally, we're going to pick exercises that have high EMG of the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus which is going to be exercises that are going to be resisted flexion and abduction, resisted external rotation, and also pressing. Because if you think about a press, it's very, very similar to scaption. So during scaption, you have your thumb facing up, so you have relative external rotation of the shoulder, and you're lifting or abducting the arm. When we do a press, you have your palms facing up towards the ceiling, elbows are underneath the hand, so, so relative external rotation again, and then you're pressing fully overhead, which is just going to be resisted flexion, just like scaption is. So it makes sense that any sort of press overhead is going to have similar EMG to, let's say, a scaption. All right. Keep in mind the one study showed the subscap was also active as well. All right. So what are we doing? We're choosing rotator cuff exercises that have high EMG of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, right? So again, resisted flexion, abduction, resisted external rotation, and press exercises. We're also choosing exercises that are going to be similar to the stress of Olympic weightlifting on the shoulder, all right? So I'm choosing rotator cuff exercises that are above 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. I'm choosing exercises that have heavier loads, and I'm emphasizing certain positions that are going to be important in Olympic weightlift. weightlifting. Excuse me. So similar to pressing weights overhead and lowering weights overhead, like the demand you'll see in a jerk, choosing exercises that are going to mimic that turnover portion of the snatch, right? And also mimicking exercises that are going to be similar to the lockout portion of a jerk and snatch because A, that's a hard part um, of the movement on the shoulder and B, oftentimes when people get hurt during Olympic lifts, it's during that catch position. I want to get that position as strong as possible. That kind of serves as insurance in case my shoulder doesn't like a specific rep, it's able to handle that force and doesn't get hurt, right? Exercise number one is the elbow elevated dumbbell external rotation. So in this movement, you're sitting down, you have one leg elevated up on the floor or the bench, and your elbow is resting on your knee. And one of the reasons why I like this exercise is because we're externally rotating against the load and you have your elbow at 90 degrees, which is going to mimic the same turnover position of a snatch. All right. The other thing is this is going to be resisted external rotation which we know is going to target the infraspinatus, and it's a very important muscle during Olympic lifts. Exercise number two, 90-90 band external rotation. 
And the reason why I like this one is because it's very similar to the turnover position of the snatch, just like the last exercise. So you're 90 degrees of abduction and you have resisted external rotation, which we know targets the infraspinatus and supraspinatus. And we're emphasizing that turnover portion of the snatch. Exercise number three, very similar to exercise number two, 90, 90 band external rotation to overhead press. So same exact motion as a 90, 90 band external rotation, except once we finish the external rotation, we now press completely overhead. And what's nice about this exercise is that it's going to focus on that turnover portion of the snatch, but also it's going to strengthen the lockout portion for jerks and snatches as well. So we're starting to be a little bit more specific to the lockout portion of Olympic lifts with a rotator cuff exercises. Exercise number four is a prone Y. I like this is because it has high EMG of the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus. And we're also going towards lockout. So this is going to be helpful for building strength and stability for locking weights out overhead. Next exercise is the Cuban press. This is a very interesting exercise. I actually love it. So standing up, you have two light dumbbells and you pull the dumbbells up into a high and outside position or scarecrow position. And from here, you externally rotate until you're at your end range of external rotation. And then you come right back down into internal rotation and back to your side. So what's really cool about this exercise is it's kind of like a slow muscle snatch. So it really is focusing on that turnover portion of the snatch, building some resiliency in that very uh, specific position for the snatch. Next is good old scaption or abduction with a thumbs up. So one of the reasons why I really like this exercise is because it just has, it's been shown time and time again to have very high EMG for the supraspinatus as well as the infraspinatus. When you turn your thumbs up, it's going to mimic some slight external rotation of the shoulder. And that's exactly what your shoulder does when you're pressing loads overhead. So again, specific to our Olympic lifts, particularly the jerk. It's really nice in folks to have irritable shoulders because we can use nice low loads. We can go slowly, which is great for folks that can't tolerate heavier loading initially. And like I said previously, it mimics that pressing motion overhead. Very similar to an overhead press, just probably a little bit slower with less load. Next, dumbbell overhead press. And one of the reasons why I like this exercise is because we're getting closer and closer to our barbell jerk. So we're looking more and more specific towards the Olympic lifts with this exercise. We can start to load it a little bit heavier, which is going to be important uh, because when we lift heavy weights for Olympic weightlifting, we're not going slow. We're using heavy loads. We're going quickly. So when we use a dumbbell overhead press, that's going to be a little bit closer to a jerk than let's say dumbbell scaption, right? has high EMG of the supraspinatus as well as infraspinatus, although you probably have decent, uh, excuse me, subscapularis activation as well. And it's a phenomenal exercise for building strength overall in the shoulder. Uh, I just feel that in folks that Olympic lift regularly, they should have some sort of overhead pressing into the program. Uh, and the dumbbell overhead press kind of fits that bill. So here's what I want you to do next, guys. If you enjoyed this video so far, I have an entire course. It's free. It's called the Fitness Pain-Free Mini Course. And we go over three lessons. It's going to help you take a lot of this information that we went over so far and put it into practice. The first lecture is called Why We Need a Better System. So first and foremost, the way we treat fitness individuals, all right, athletic people in the gym from a physical therapy perspective is pretty much broke, okay? So we need a better system to serve the folks that are in the gym, that get hurt, they want to get back to training, all right? Lecture number two is called Seven Reasons Why People Get Hurt in the Gym. And essentially, we have to know the reasons why people get hurt in the gym so we can keep them safe in the future, right? And when they get hurt, we have to know why and how to get them back to training in the gym. Okay. So a thorough understanding of this is very, very important. I actually have a really cool infographic that goes along with this lecture that you get for free as well. And lastly, we go over a case study of how to get someone out of pain and back to training. So these principles are all phenomenal, but we don't actually put it together and you don't understand how to create a program to get people back in the gym and keep them safe for the long term. Then we lose, right? So I'll put a link in the show notes for this. It's a fitness pain-free mini course. Definitely check this out.